We got we got enough audio. Okay. Roll one. But there's a, there's a lot of a lot of movement up here. Go ahead, dear. Cool. Want me to go ahead? Sure. Okay, there's something touching my ankle. Something's touching your ankle? Mm -hmm. Is it following? It, is it, it, it felt like a, just something. It's very strange. It doesn't feel like a hand. Is it like a static charge? No. Okay. It just felt like my sock got like super heavy. Hmm. Oh, almost like something was pulling it down. <sighs> kind of. It's <laughs> kind of interesting. Yeah. There's been a lot of interesting this weekend. Yes. <laughs> a whole lot. Is there a red pod going off? No. That was me. Cricket. I hear a cricket. I hear I hear like a cricket. Maybe that's what it was. It wasn't yeah, I just hear a cricket. Okay. What's going on? I thought I just heard a man speak in the distance. Um... He was saying rituals. Almost like a chanting, murmury voice. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Not creepy at all. <laughs> so faint, though. Mm hmm. So, Sherry, the one that we were supposed to interview, mm -hmm. I was telling you how I like to follow her around or whatever. I've been saying her name a lot here, seeing if I can stir some things up. I haven't tried Debbie's name, but it was when I started saying Debbie's name. That's when the weird stuff kind of ha started happening. I'm not saying it's associated to her, but when I did say her name is when... I started getting like this cold on my back. Then it started happening to Derek. And then Missy felt, how did she explain it? Almost like a hand on her back? Yeah, like a super cold hand on her back. It's almost like it kind of went around the room. Like it was getting a feel for everybody. Is what it seemed like to me, because it went from one to the other. Picking up anything. Just saying. Okay. There was something in the doorway? Yeah, something got my attention and nothing. Field. Huh. And as I move past that spot, it goes away. So is it almost like something that there's something there is blocking the Let me let me see Derek. Like it's put up a It's right here. Like it's put up a barrier at the I door? don't know. Damn, bro, I'll be getting chest pain. Are you? Yeah. I just felt the temperature rise. 
It does feel like you got warmer in here. I'm starting to sweat. Oh, that's yeah. bad. That's really bad, dude. There's a field right in the middle of the doorway. <clears throat> oh. Oh. You all right? That's bad. Okay. What's hurt? Oh. You need to sit down? I need to take this off. I am getting something on my leg. Oh. He's connected. Whew, fuck. I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> now I'm sweating. Let's try to breathe. Like, it, it, it wasn't, it was like somebody punched me in the chest. That type of chest pain. Mm-hmm. You don't feel that, do you? The whole house is jumping up and down. The journey to document our search for paranormal phenomena in the last seven years has brought us to many places. Prisons, hospitals, 
asylums, schools, cemeteries, and historical buildings are all hotspots for claims of hauntings that span from echoes of the past to dark, malevolent entities that wish to do people harm. Some places seem to have hauntings that encompass the full spectrum of supernatural happenings that you hear about in stories and watch on TV. These places can be entire areas or even cities. During our travels, we have discovered that Hartford City, Indiana is one of those places. Enriched with history and culture, the small community in the rural Midwest may have the recipes of a haunting of this size. These recipes include Native American history, historical landmarks that exist and are maintained from the birth of the city, and people who live there struggling to make it in an economy that has changed and faced many challenges over time. Our research into the paranormal has seen areas like Hartford City become hotbeds of high strangeness due to the trend we and many others see in human behavior. The people who experience the paranormal tend to find themselves on the outskirts of society. Whether they are victims of poverty, abusive relationships, or exposed to drug and alcohol use, many forms of emotional trauma and economic hardship is tied to stories of strange happenings like hauntings. Many stories of the supernatural are found in TV shows and movies depict individuals who live in disparaged rural communities who experience ghostly encounters and brushes with evil. Hartford City is a perfect setting. Every small town has stories. Every small town has secrets. We're here at the old Blackford County Jail. Um, some people may know it as the Hartford City Jail, but uh, it's a building that is constructed in the late 1870s. Um, it says 1879 on the front of the building, in fact. And uh, this town is very historic. It, it, it shows, you know, evidence architecturally and uh, just how it, you know, overall looks dating back to the very dawn of the history of this area, you know, Indiana, Ohio, um, early 1800s. You can tell that, that there's a lot of buildings that propped up around that time, but the jail um, definitely came a little bit later. So it still has a historical feel to it, but um, there has, you know, been a little bit of advancements in jail since, you know, people started settling in this area. And I think it's significant historically because um, when we do paranormal research, we go out, you know, and look for historical places. And this being a jail as well, definitely, you know, has a recipe that we look for. You know, energy, does it, you know, stain or imprint these types of locations? Uh, those are questions we ask. So we seek out these, um, these locations. And this, you know, was kind of like two birds with one stone. So, um, Definitely seen a lot of videos and stories about the place and the haunted claims. Um, the owner, Dan, is really super cool. He owns several historical locations in Indiana and Ohio, and uh, he cares about them. And as Derek and others stated in their interviews, this place is really very well maintained. Um, he cares about them and wants to see it, you know, linger on for generations to come. So we come here to help support that. Welcome to your new home. <laughs> That's cool. That was cool. And you see the first cell phone right there, right? Yes, I do. So how many of these turnstiles do you think are still in existence? I've heard there's seven. I've heard there's seven left. So, they just tore down a, a jail somewhere in Ohio and we're working out a deal getting the rest of the cell doors because I knew there was a lot more cell doors in here. Okay, so, entertainment center. And that deluxe. They used to have a TV on the far side of the, over there with the uh, plugs are. So every every show had bars in it. Um, 
Then over here was where they ate, play cards, whatever. And I guess they could just call whenever they wanted to, as long as they had a, a nickel. So, but cell phones have gotten a lot lower, haven't they, over the years? I uh, found out recently only two people escaped from here, but it wasn't from the original design. They were able to pry this up, this thing here. So they pried that up and two of them escaped, but that's not the original design. They put that in for ventilation or something. You can see from underneath. So had not been for that, nobody been able to escape. The walls, ceilings, floors, eight inches of granite. You know, like on that one shawl shank, where he takes that little jeweler's pick and goes through it, and it really goes through three or four. You wouldn't even scratch the surface with granite. And uh, they're eight inches thick, quarried in Michigan, brought down here as a puzzle, and put together by our forefathers in the late 1800s. Tough, because I bet this little block right here probably weighs a ton and a half. Jim, or uh, granite is the hardest stone I think, outside of gemstones, and the heaviest. It's hard enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mount Rushmore is made out of granite, and people ask, shouldn't we protect it? Engineers say, oh, in 1,000 years, well, well, there's an eighth of an inch, we'll think about it. So in here, I would say, for the longest time, we used to get hard-soled shoes walking around the catwalk, and Back when the computers, when they crashed, you lost everything, they didn't have backup. Well, unfortunately, that's when, when we had all those. So we've lost a lot of that. Um, these two cells here tend to get people scratched in them. That started about two years ago. And I've never seen an even number of scratches. It's always been odd, one or three. And um, I know the first time I stuck around with a ghost group here, they had uh, a couple people here, another girl on down, and I was standing right about here. And I thought ghost hunters were trained and all this stuff. And But uh, somebody from here said, is there anybody in here? And you hear this, yeah, over there somewhere. And we're all counted for. That girl comes running around grabbed onto my arm, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so scared, that was funny. I didn't realize that ghost hunters just, sometimes can be the first time here even, so. Do you need that? Is that cool if I turn that light off? Yeah, that's good. Okay. What's your finger going I say, for as much hard as you're doing that, I don't even know if I can spin it. Don't put your hands on it, I'll spin it for you. Yeah, don't put your fingers through the bars, whatever you do. And that will straight up break your fingers. Okay. That is cool. Very cool. It's super cool, man. Are you going to spin it, Justin? I'm good. You can go down there and turn that motion to the head off by you know. What the hell is that? I just unplugged that. Gosh, Definitely a cool factor in here. Am I blinding you, Josh? I'll turn it down. Some flowers. Get some flowers in here. I don't think I'd like to be. Uh Locked in here. Why not? Because I'd be claustrophobic. They got some pillows in here. Mats are covered with dust. Is that where we're sleeping? We can't sleep here for the night.
You want to take that in there, or do you want me to go in there? Okay. I'm just going to sweep it. This is the one that um, these. You said the second one. I thought it was this one, both of, or both of them that people get scratched. Okay, they said. Which one did the guy hang himself in? The second one on the left, he said, right? Maybe this one. The second one on the left, he said, right? Maybe this one. The second one on the left, he said, right? The second one on the left, he said, right? This one. Pretty sure it's the second one on the left. Pretty sure. Did he uh, hang himself on the, I mean, like from the bars here? Probably. I don't think there's, don't think there's it, anything on the ceiling. There's nothing on no, the ceiling or anything to be able to. I'm getting some uh, outside contamination for the yeah. plant. What was that going to make there? Oh, there's two mats in here. Bottom mm -hmm. bunk and top bunk. It's an awful short bunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little weird in here. So in here, this is where the sheriff died. And we do have the the paper it shows when when he was uh, um, when he was sheriff. I thought it was I thought he was sheriff for three days, but this says three weeks, so it was back in the seventies. Two days. Okay, so maybe I'm right. Um, but yeah, the the call, McCollum went out on a on a call back in '77. Was shot by, on a domestic, shot and killed. So Ed Townsend took over and then died X amount later, three days, three weeks later. I thought it was three days because I thought the news crews here said we had three sheriffs in one week, and then Coons took over and finished out. So in one week we had three sheriffs. And he died right there. They said that uh, um, heart attack was so massive it probably didn't fill the floor. So the sheriff dies in here. So that's one death. The other death, and I don't know what happened to the book here, but there was a bank robber who, um, with two other people, robbed the local bank. And he said, I'll. Bring the detective by tomorrow, I'll confess everything. Well, that night he hung himself in the cell. Second one on the left. So, now, did he have help? Who knows? <laughs> the two, two other guys? Don't know. Um, so that's the two deaths. I can tell a lot of people have been housed here. Um, a lot of voices, over voices, over voices. Anywhere from guys laughing, talking, some arguing, some fighting. <laughs> um, Further back, um, it housed, feels like some pretty bad guys, 
bad murderers. I, I, I feel from pretty far back. I don't know the date, but it feels old. Um, and they were rough and tough and kind of hard to handle, actually. And you could tell almost the law enforcement that was here was on pins and needles with them being here, worried that they might get out or might harm them. You want me to go first? No. Okay. I can hear them talking upstairs. Yeah. Is there anybody down here with us? Someone just touched me. If you're down here, make that meter go off again like you just did. face? No. What? Someone is rubbing my chin. Your chin? My chin. All right. Why are you touching her? here or this was like the commissary was it no this yeah. was the evidence room. ah please stop touching me i never give you permission to touch me are you down here protecting the evidence there's a flickering light outside they hollering outside yeah. There's a breeze. Yeah, you can feel it coming through there. Are you going to do that again? There is electric lines running through here. It would have. Right. Or, or you're not getting any EMF spots, no. right? Okay. No. So all that you're getting is the, um, the, the hits on the rim. Yeah. Okay. All right, okay, let's move. <coughs> Stop. Fire, fire alarm. Now, yeah, that stuff's gonna set it off when you get close, but you weren't. Grab it, grab it again. Grab it and make it go on, go off at a, at a higher rate.
What does that mean? The battery's low. Oh, okay. It'll be all right though. Okay. For the time we're, we're down here, it should be good. Hold on. Can you tell us your name? What's I have a temperature. What's it say? Six six six. We had an instance where we went down in the basement. We got quite a bit of activity in a in a flurry in the basement. And then once we came back upstairs, we went into one of the front rooms and I sat down on a couch and got comfortable. And something in the back of my mind told me, no, you don't wanna you don't wanna sit in the spot you're in. You wanna move a little bit. And I got up and moved a little bit and sat there and just kind of spaced out for some odd reason. With all kinds of different events going on around me, I sat in this one spot and just kind of almost went into a daze where I didn't, I didn't care about what was going on. Um, you probably could have strapped on a bomb and ran through this place and blew it up and I'd still be sitting on that couch not caring what was going on. It was really strange. Okay, you was hitting this meter earlier. Hit it again. where the sheriff passed away we're doing a germanium diode experiment it is approximately what 11 20 46 11 46 okay was that uh missy yes yes okay did you guys want to go up yeah I'm sitting in here. Derek? Yes. Where are you at? Right here. Where is here? On this couch. What's going on, dude? I don't know. You don't know? I have no idea. <laughs> are you sure? I'm positive. I'm just chilling. Did she just automatically just get up and do that? Or? Yeah. Okay, it does feel a little chest heavy in here. 
We have no anomalous spike. That was my cord hitting that. Good. You sure you're okay here? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. You had this weird look on your face. I wasn't... Yeah, you do have a weird look on your face. That's weird. So what happened down there? Or were you guys just in here? They were in here for a few minutes. Yeah, know. we all, we just came in here. We ain't been in here. So was she feeling weird prior to that? She just said she had to go to the bathroom. I mean, it, it wasn't bad down there. They, well, some, she kept feeling something rubbing her face. She felt something touch her arm. And then uh, the freaking uh, rim pod on that millimeter kept going off. It a, did? A lot. Down there? A lot. I hope you're reporting it. I was. Okay. <laughs> I was straight up on it. Oh, I forgot to hit record, Justin. <laughs> no, it's been recording. But uh, then we walked all the way back into the back and then came back out. She didn't feel right in the uh, the center room when you walk down the small corridor. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel very good in there and then we came back up here and then, I don't know, what the hell? Well, she come barreling through there she's like, I gotta get out. Yeah, I heard her slam down the ramp. I'm like, what the hell? She's yeah. like, are you all right, Missy? Yeah, I'm fine. Then she get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm like, like, okay. Get out of here. Yeah, I, hell, I have no idea. Hmm. Prior to being in the living room, they had the Jacob's Ladder on. Mm -hmm. Have you previously ever been exposed to a Jacob's Ladder? No. Okay. Do you feel that maybe you have a sensitivity to the high EMF or the energy that it was giving off? Do you think that may have been causing you to be irritable? I, I've never been sensitive to it before, so I'm not sure. Right, but we usually experience it in really low levels, and I'm assuming with that thing amped up the way it was, it's gonna have the EMF in that room, like through the roof. Right. Um, do you think that may have caused part of your irritability, or do you think it was paranormal? It could have, but that doesn't explain why. Yeah. Yeah, EMF, high EMF, tends to make you, you know, I, I wouldn't think it would make you violent like that. Like, I wanted to hit him. Right, but was it because you were irritable or was it just because you were angry? No, I hit, it was violent. I was, I felt sheer violence. Like I was going to just sheer straight punch him in the face. Okay. But he wasn't even in that room. Right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. Dan Allen also owns another location across from the courthouse called the Irvin Campbell Building, where a speakeasy once served alcohol to locals during the Prohibition. Not being the most active, reports of strange happenings still occur. Local businesses currently rent space on the bottom floor, but echoes from the past still stir on the upper level. Disembodied voices and people being touched are reported in the speakeasy area. However, during our visits to this building, no anomalous activity occurred. This historic structure that once served as lawyer and bank offices now remains abandoned. The architecture and eerie hallways make for an interesting backdrop to the layers of history that permeate Hartford City. A block down the street, an old bar formerly known as the Centerfield Bar resides. After being closed for two years, it has recently been purchased by Brockton Miller and has renamed it the Griffin's Blind Tiger after the man who constructed the building named William Griffin in 1904. We interviewed a local amateur historian named Brandy Reeder, who was once a bartender there. She has done a lot of research on the bar and has her own stories of the paranormal to share from this location. I'm Brandy Reeder. Um, my friend Brockton Miller owns the bar. I'm just helping him out get started. It's a new location in Hartford City. He's named it Griffin's Blind Tiger in Hartford City because Griffin was the builder of the building. Originally, it was called the Interurban Saloon, and during the Prohibition, it was called the Interurban Cigar Shop. Throughout the years, 
it's been several different saloons, bars, or taverns. It's been called um, Frasier's Tavern, Frasier's Cafe, um, Tudor's, Centerfield. And I actually worked here during the early 2000s when it was Centerfield for a few years. Um, my mom worked here in 1980 when it was Tudor's. Um, Brockton recently acquired the building from his family and asked me to help him because he wanted to preserve the building and restore it back to a more original, its original state and also do ghost tours mainly because he knew a lot of employees that had experiences as well as his mom. When I worked here, usually around closing time or last call, which is usually 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, at the register, you would always see a shadow walking by. So if you're at the register counting down, typically you're looking in the mirror and you would look down at the register or glance up in the mirror checking everybody and you'd see a shadow walking back and forth. And I'm, at that time, I think I was 22. Didn't really phase me much because I've kind of grown up with spirits. A lot of other people that I worked with that kind of freaked them out. So I was always the one that worked night shift. Um, the only thing that kind of bothered me was the first time I had to go in the basement. You'll go down the stairs and you have to take an immediate left and then turn immediately again and there's a, a room that's, there's only one room downstairs other than the walk-in cooler. And you get an uneasy feeling in there. And I never realized that there was a a room that had been closed off. They recently just cut a hole in a wall to do some electrical work. And once they did that, they found a desk back there and there's still a clipboard on the wall and a pencil sharpener. And I'm not sure if maybe that's why. I have no idea, but they put a wall up. And if you go on the walk-in cooler, sometimes, they'll close the door on you while you're in there. <laughs> You'll go to push it open and it won't be a forceful shut, but it's almost like a tug of war kind of thing. And as far as beer delivery, ever since they've built this bar, the beer delivery is only done through the alley. And once we go on the tour, you'll see, but the entrance almost looks like a mine entrance. You'll open the door and You've got your beams and it's been dug out and all the dirt is to the side. And it's, they've delivered beer that way up until the last two years when they closed down. And a lot of beer delivery guys will kind of hurry themselves through because you can hear footprints behind you. And sometimes the water will gather up downstairs and you can hear someone rushing through that water down at the bottom of the stairs, right as you go through. Um, like I said, when I worked here in the early 2000s, I had quite a few customers. I did do an investigation, the very first investigation here, with a couple of my friends. I was focusing more primarily on the older people that had passed away that were my customers. And then I was actually sitting one bar stool over and I physically heard a woman's voice right over here where the pool table would have been. And I wasn't thinking that it might have been someone my age. So we started doing an EVP session and I realized that it was my friend Jennifer that had passed away a few years back. And when we did that EVP session, she was playing music on the jukebox and the jukebox is no longer here. So that was pretty cool. She was also a really big pool player and she was an amputee on one arm but could 
was a hell of a pool player, even with only having one hand. And you can hear that her racking up the next set of balls so that the next player could come and play with her. Later that evening, we sent a small team to investigate the bar in hopes of experiencing some of the reported activity. Bars can store high amounts of psychokinetic energy, which manifests in a variety of ways. The attempts to connect with the spirits that may still linger in the bar was our main focus, and what we encountered was very interesting. We hope that the information we acquired that night connects with the spirits Brandy believes are there. If not, we may have provided more information about who else could be haunting this location. Justin, if you put the EDI kind of closer to you, I can zoom in and get a tighter shot. You just want to you just want to zoom in on my nipple. I can. Somebody just did a drum roll on the counter. Like pacha. Like this. Just like that. But it was just down there a ways. The energy is definitely different from when Brandy's here and not here. Mm-hmm. She was the bartender. Exactly. She makes she makes the customers happy. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe that's why I picked up on her dad. Mm -hmm. And why we got that swoosh that went down the bar, man. So let's let's try to. I want to go grab a couple of those photographs. <laughs> Let's try to do hot dog. She didn't happen to say which seat they were, they usually sat in, did she? No, not to me. Oh, there's a mouse. You see one? Yeah, coming towards me. There's definitely some EMF. <clears throat> so what's everybody's drink of choice? Oh, that was you, Mom. I was mm -hmm. like, what oh, the sorry. fuck? <laughs> yeah. I was laughing. They answered you. What'd they say? <laughs> Anything. Anything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, if the bartender was here, I'd, I'd, I'd buy around. <laughs> Okay, that's me. Try not to touch the counter because I get I guarantee oh. every time I hit that the geophone goes off. Just okay, one. sorry. Yeah, just a little bit. I got my blanket up there too. Uh -oh. You're fine. I'm gonna just try not to. Derek wanted us to do the geophone, so the EDI covers that. All right, hot dog. Brandy told us this is one of your your favorite hangouts. She would like to know if you're here in spirit. We're going to give you some time to communicate in the way you like to communicate. Is that a knock? Could have been. I heard it's from somewhere. So, buddy, I got your picture here. Look like a pretty fun character. Are you still with us? I felt something go up my arms just then. I could hear somebody talking, but it was, I couldn't, and I was hearing it to my ear, so it was trying to come through. I couldn't make out what they said. Is that you, hot dog? Can you speak a little louder? Outside. I think that was outside. Yeah, that sounded outside. All right, well, we're, we're in town. We're from out of town. We're filming a documentary about the history and the 
the energies that remain that stem from the people who used to live here, the people that's passed on, and even the people that still are living. We're here to tell your story. We're here to, to honor Hartford City and its residents. If you would like to be, if you like your story to be told by us, See something's touching my hand. We have devices here on the bar. There's an energy shift. Mm-hmm. Brandy Reader is a good friend of mine. I got to meet her for the first time in the flesh today, or yesterday rather. She's a really, really good person. And she would love it if we were able to speak with anybody that was a part of her life. One of her friends, family members. So distant. What's distant? Conversation going on. Definitely down there. It's just so close to being audible. It's just, it doesn't want to pull in. Does it, if you moved closer to them? I don't know. Would that? I could try. Make it audible? I don't know. I'll walk down there and kind of give it a shot. Try to juice it up. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Try harder. Oh, you. We got 74 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels way hotter than that. But that's what it says. Feels like 89. <laughs> I have a weird smell right here. I don't know if it's coming from the sink, but it's almost like, it's almost like somebody ate garlic and it's like bad breath. Hmm. That's what it smells like. I don't know, not really. Trying to disrespect anybody, but that's what I'm smelling. <laughs> right. Hey, sometimes you got to eat garlic. Mm -hmm. Something's touching me. Is there a bug on me? Mm -hmm. uh, so, on your forearm? Yeah, on my elbow. No, on your forearm or something on your forearm. It's, it's gone now. It was on your forearm. I felt something touching me on my elbow. Or up on my, right here.
Was that you? Mm-hmm. Is there anybody here? We have a few devices here that allow you to try to communicate or let us know something's going on. You hear that? Someone's humming. Through the radio. Is that where it's coming from? It's kind of like... Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing is coming through the radio. Who's humming? Was that you? Is there anybody here? We have a few devices here that allow you to try to communicate or let us know something's going on. You hear that? Someone's humming. Through the radio. Is that where it's coming from? Kind of like... Mm -hmm. Who's humming? Was that you? Is there anybody here? We have a few devices here that allow you to try to communicate or let us know something's going on. You hear that? Someone's humming. Through the radio. Is that where it's coming from? It's kind of like... Mm -hmm. Who's humming? Griffin's Blind Tiger. Expectation versus what happened. Expectations low. And just because it was kind of a last minute thing. And we, we were able to get in for a, a tour. Um, old building. Just like most of the other locations here in town. You know, the, the, a lot of history. You know, the, the, bars, the bar had changed hands, changed names. Um, a lot of, a lot of different energies come in and out of bars. So you have your happy people, people drinking to get away from, you know, problems in their lives, fights. You know, maybe some, maybe some hookups. But a lot of different energies in and out of that bar for years. And good people, you know, you get to uh, become friends with the bartender and become regulars and, and just all of that energy and some of them passing away, maybe coming back to, to visit. And even, even after all that, I didn't have real high expectations. It wasn't really investigated much if any. So we went in and, and just just to see what would happen. I think the people that were investigating the others other than myself helped kind of bring that energy up in order to experience the things that we did. So that was I think that definitely helped our, our session. I'm going to try something here. Oh. 
I bet you there's nobody else in this bar that can hit this punching bag harder than I can. Anybody want to take me up on that? Is that right? Seventy. You think you can do more than that? Come over and hit this punching bag, see if you can get it harder than that. Oh, my camera flipped down when I hit the punching bag. There we go. <laughs> Come on, who's got it in them? Were they saying anything down there? Um, one guy stumbled over there. And um, he said something, but he was pretty drunk, so. I don't know if any of it's being picked up or not. want to try to stir up some energy without being disrespectful. Right. So which one of you pretty ladies want to be my girlfriend tonight? Nobody? I didn't think so. <laughs> that thing is still acting hot. Is that you? Who is that at the bar? I'll walk back over. you set it off again? It's getting hotter in here. It's a whole degree hotter than when we, than when we came in. It was so weird. I just looked down Donna's direction there and her face looked completely different. Did not look like her. Now I'm feeling cooler. It gave me chills. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't, I feel, I feel cooler. Do you, are you, you? Yeah, I'm me. <laughs> like it really didn't, it might have been just lighting or whatever, but it did not look, your face did not look like you. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel cooler, so there may be, um. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's getting cooler here. Ah, ah, here we go. I'm feeling it. You feel the coolness? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. I just all even felt a breath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who is this? You're still my help. 
uh, getting tingles. I was being touched over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting because. touched on my elbow. Yeah, on the elbow. Yeah, I wonder how well, it might be. Still cool. I ain't getting no service around here. I want to have to come back here by myself and make it myself. <clears throat> Anybody count this drawer down yet? Better get these bottles topped off. It's interesting. What would have made that noise? No. I heard a noise down there and I heard a noise up here. So did I. Mm-hmm. It sounded like it was around that. Let's, tower there. Let's listen for a second. Is that you? Nope. Came from over there. It sounded like it was right behind you. Yeah. So it's like a hard step. Uh huh. So, what? Whoa. Did you hear that bump? No, I saw something moving. pass right there in front of that door. Oh, I'm getting tingles in my yeah. legs. I have chills it's, all it's through just, my body right now. I do too. And I, I don't just, feel cold. I just have chills all through yeah, my body. Yeah, it just hit me. Yeah, it, it okay, passed. Hold, okay, hold on, Mom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this Brandy's mom? Whoever it was died of a heart attack. There it was again. I stepped over here. You heard that thud? I stepped, was it me moving? Do it again. Yep, there it was again. Yeah, yeah. there's this okay. little thing here. Okay. There is an there is an energy right around here. Wait, wait. I just got chills again in that the uh, vibration yeah. thing. I got um, the lights uh, blinking. The it's geophone blinking. on the ones on the bottom. I don't know. I just saw. Yeah. It's EMF a, is blue and the geophone's like yellowish orange. It's yellow. It just keeps. Boom. Yeah. It shouldn't be going off right now. Boom. Boom. Oh. Boom. Who do we have at the bar? That's me. Josh is on high alert right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got the chills. It's it's I mean it's all mm -hmm. through my body right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's someone here. I tickled tickled a fancy somewhere it's, in there. It's consistently going off right mm -hmm. now. And I can't I don't think I can get Ma, it. With I mean, the, uh, what, what's going on here, Mom? Help me out here. You said whoa? Yeah. I 
would really like to know what I'm feeling right now. Donna's not talking. It's a man. Mm hmm. Shh. It's got to be that man with the beard or someone that looks like him. See, I'm tapping. It was He's good. trying to use mom. It's me. But I'm just seeing how, how much it takes to set that off. He He's trying to use you somehow. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Now I'll speak. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to let him become him into this reality. But, yeah, he's definitely drawing from me because I still feel the coolness but instead of being beside me now it's in front of me so like in between me and you now um, it's very odd because there was something to do with this mirror mm -hmm. and it was like it was almost like I was seeing him superimposed over you mm-hmm So is that the same thing that changed your face earlier? Or could, have, could have been. Could have been. Let me try it again. something wanting me to go down there do you I have no idea Hopefully not. are you wanting me to go down there you were leading me over here Can you, if that was you doing that, can you validate that? Can you bump up the energy again? I really don't want to go down there. It's bad down there. Yeah, it's not very healthy for us that are living in this reality. It, it, you got my attention from down here somewhere. I don't know if it's wanting me to go down there. I don't want to go down there. I really don't. So the main thing that we experienced was there was some cold spots. We had uh, the, the mail meter uh, kept going off and, and then we found some high EMFs coming from the lights. So we, we, of course, turned the lights off and and turned the uh, night vision on the cameras on so that we could see everything. And even after that, we were getting random hits, you know, just with the, you know, the uh, mail meter sitting on the bar there. Um, none of the coolers are on, the you know, lights off, pretty much everything's just turned off so that 
and we had the EDI on, on the bar. And after a while, it, the vibration monitor was, it was like somebody was tapping lightly. You couldn't hear it, but it was, the light was coming on, like something was tapping it. And there was a little bit of temperature fluctuation, but I don't think that played a, a factor in, in what was going on. But definitely got cold spots and things would happen. You know, Justin would, would say something that, that, that he experienced something and, and at the same time that he experienced that I was feeling chills and uh, it just kind of goes down through your, through your whole body. And at one point, one of the other investigators sitting at the bar I looked down and there was a light behind her like an exit sign or something so I couldn't see her face real, real clear but I said something about her face not looking like, look didn't look like her and she just kind of smiled and nodded like she <laughs> she knew that that uh, something was going on there but it was that was definitely a weird experience you know, looking down that way and, and not seeing her, almost like somebody else. Definitely something that I wasn't expecting. Do you have any um, visual um, description of the, of the male that's trying to come across? <clears throat> um... The one that was here um, had um, salt and pepper hair, but more gray than the dark. And he was bald on top, and the sides were long, um, about right here, which is kind of unusual, with I think a scruffy beard, but a short scruffy beard. Mustache. Uh, um, yeah, that, yeah, the whole... Goatee. Yeah. And he had on, it was like a beige shirt with, um, plaid, but it was, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it had a small plaid in it and, uh, khaki pants. Um... And he had, um, I want to say light gray eyes, because there for just a little bit, it was like he was come right up to you and looked right at you with his eyes wide open. Okay. Um, and then the gentleman over there that when you did the punching bag, he was um, head on a uh, dark blue jean jacket uh, dark blue jean pants. He was very, very thin, uh, like he hasn't ate in a long time. Uh, he had dark hair um, that was a shag cut that was tapered here and was down about this far behind his collar here. And he walked over there and he was staggering and he said, is that as hard as you can hit? <laughs> and then that was, he just was gone. Like he was going to come over and show what he was going to do, but then he just disappeared. The final location we are covering in this documentary has a dark history and an even darker reputation. The location's name references the very street it can be found in Hartford City. The Monroe House has been a popular attraction for ghost hunters enthusiasts, and investigators due to its dark reputation and rumors of being a demon house. The demonic prestige stems from stories of former tenants who performed occult rituals inside the home in the attempt to summon demons to do their bidding. Other stories of murder, child abuse, and witchcraft stain the walls within this cursed structure. Many reports of paranormal activity have been reported in the home. Owner Eddie Norris speaks with us to ensure that the proper stories are told regarding this infamous location. All right, Eddie, 
Let's go back. Okay. Take me through the very beginning, how you came across the Monroe house and go from there. It was accidental. Uh, I buy and flip properties and uh, I had a house uh, about two blocks away that I purchased and I happened to drive by this place right here and it was abandoned obviously and uh, I told my brother that I'm gonna buy that place 30 50 grand I can fix it up and it'd be a nice flip um, that's how I first found the place it was totally accident so and of course uh, I'm sure everybody knows it didn't go as planned. So. Okay, so kind of walk us through real quick how you acquired it. Um, I had a buddy that was a broker, and I told him right away, gave him the address to the place, and uh, he said, no problem, he'll keep an eye out. And it was sometime later uh, that he called me and said, it's up for bid. I think it was midnight on a Sunday night they were going to start the bidding, and I, I was at his office, and uh, we placed uh, the first bid at, I think it was a little after midnight, 1201, and I was the only bid on the property. So that's how I got the property, which was kind of strange how they set that up. Um, also, HUD sent me a book, which was kind of unusual, I thought, because I've never received one before, and it was documenting the damages, the fires to the house, which I thought was really bizarre. But you know, I don't care about that stuff, you know, it just, you know, I just want the house. I already know the damages and the cost, the estimate. So that's how I got the house. And that first summer we came in here, not. Where did that come from? Kitchen. Stand by. We ought to do this interview out of here. No, no, no. This is what, this is a paranormal interview. Yeah, man, I hate this place. <laughs> it's all yeah. right. Yeah, wait, wait till you're, wait till you're by yourself and you're trying to work, or you come in here mm -hmm. and you're trying, in some crap, odd. So is that a normal sound? Is that something you've heard before? Uh, uh, yeah, but that that one is not the ones that really set me back. It's where it sounds like people are talking, or somebody's walking. The cadence and everything sounds like footfalls. That's a problem. Or worse yet, you think you're seeing somebody in the house and. That's even bigger. Hello. Do you want me to close this door? Or? Um, you don't have to. Bathroom lights on. We'll take you straight into the the fun room. Was there a light on down there before? Where? The bathroom? Yeah. Okay. As you can tell, this is the fun room. Footsteps. Yeah. Did you hear a voice too? Yes. This is what made Braylon scream and run out. The first it happened the same, same exact same way. Did you hear that? Footsteps. Yeah. Did you hear a voice too? Yes. This is what made Braylon scream and run out. The first it happened the same, same exact same way. Did you hear that? Footsteps. Yeah. Did you hear a voice too? Yes. 
this is what made Braylon scream and run out. The first did it happened the same, same exact same way. Just got chills. They, that's exactly what happened to Braylon right out here crying. Something's moving around. Yes. Could it be an animal? I didn't hear it when me and my mom were here before you got back. I mean, it's still going on. Dude, that is so freaking loud. I'm still hearing shit. Did you do that? No, that was right behind you. Dude, I am lit to fuck up. Dude, okay, what I'm gonna, the... I am leaning against the wall, so I'm gonna move a little bit. Okay. But I leaned against the wall, but I wasn't moving when that happened. So I'm gonna move a little bit and see. No. That was a knock on the wall or something right behind you. All right, let's just chill. I can hear it over the car. Should we go back down there? Do you think it's downstairs? Yes. Definitely. That's what it sounds like to you, right? Shh. It's downstairs. Dude, what the fuck is that? Hey! That's gotta be something. Dude, that's back here. Is back it? here, yeah. It's plastic or something on a window. Yeah, it's gotta be something explainable, right? I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but it's I was just plastic like... plastic sucking in and... Just wait, wait for it. That's it. I was like, wait a minute. Like, that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is freaking awesome. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> okay. Definitely well. got to note that. That knock, though. I mean, that knock... It was, was right behind me. Did, did you hear footsteps when we were in, in there? Yes. Okay. It was. It, it sounded like it was coming down the hall, but I heard a voice. It sounded like it was downstairs. Did it sound female to you? Yes. And then definitely that knock. All right. So let's go to the point where you started coming in, mm -hmm. renovating. Uh, it would be that summer. I did not plan on doing that because we had other projects lined up. But after uh, I had come in again, and I already knew this, uh, there was a hole where there was a fire, it took out the bathroom. 
And we kind of looked at that, and I was really afraid that now that I own the place, if a kid breaks in, because it may be some time before I get back in here and do any work, and he falls through that hole, I'm in trouble. So we decided to shift our equipment over here for about a month or so and just get that floor closed up. And uh, that's when, I, I don't think I heard anything about the house, the stories on it yet. Um, and again, I'm not from around here, so, you know, maybe my purchasing idea might have been a little different, maybe, had I known more of the story and the history behind the house. But that being said, um, we started working on the floors, and that's when I first noticed some weird, a really bad optical anomaly. It was really bad. And um, should I go into details on that? Or? Yeah, go for it. Uh, long story short, um, we would take turns working in here, uh, me and my brother. And um, I had, I was laying tile on the bathroom floor, decided to finish the floor. I didn't just want to cover it. I thought, we're here, let's just run the plumbing, get it done. And I backed out into the hallway and lost track of time. And it had gotten dark. It was later than I thought. And I only had a floodlight and a radio blaring. And um, that was really the only power I think we had on upstairs. But anyways, I was in the hallway. I glanced over and I seen which I thought was my brother. Instead of coming to me, he continued on into this little bedroom. And I thought, you know, it only takes a second. You know, at first like, oh, he's here. Well, why, why did he go into that room? That was weird. So I got up immediately and probably said something mean. You know how brothers are, you know, hey, idiot, what are you doing? And uh, when I went into that room, I could, it was lit up by the moonlight or the street lamp or something. And he wasn't in there. And uh, I'm not into the paranormal and that. If you're not prepared and you're not into that field, even if you watch shows on that, that can hit you really wrong. So I ran back and killed the radio real quick so I could hear what was going on. I heard nothing. And uh, man, I had a bad feeling. My only way out was down that hallway, down the stairs. And uh, I know a lot of people think it's funny, but I climbed out the bathroom window and uh, killed my last light with the extension cord. I jerked on it and pulled it out of the socket. The Monroe House. Uh, first experience I had with it was 2017. Not much actually happened. It seemed very calm. Um, there were times when it felt like things were kind of ramping up, but nothing ever happened um we had a uh, a dvr camera move on its own it went from right to left don't know why that happened it caught some evps but other than that it it seemed it seemed very calm uh second time that was different um it was more it sort of had an aggression to it not that there was something there that wanted to harm us. It's just the, just the feeling in the air that felt like there was just some aggression. And again, nothing, nothing bad happened. Um, we went, we investigated, we had fun. We captured some cool evidence, EVPs, and then that was that. Um, now, the third time I came here to the house, that was different. Um, it was a very eerie calm. And things then started to ramp up. Uh, we started to get really good EVPs. Um, I remember talking to Eddie before myself and another investigator got going. Um, it sounded like a cat was in the kitchen. It was really bizarre. And then Another investigator, he showed up with me, and we, it sounded like a dog whimpering in, in the crawl space or in the basement. It was really weird, and the other investigator, he couldn't stay uh, the two days that I was here, so I was going to investigate the house by myself. He left early. I went to go get something to eat, and I come back to the house, and I woke up to what sounded like somebody pounding on the second floor. It woke me up. I went to go check it out. I didn't see anything. 
uh, I went to come back downstairs and I went past the short hallway to the Ouija board room and I saw another investigator for like a split second walk into that Ouija board room. It was an investigator that hadn't been with us and I was the only one in the house. So I went downstairs to go grab some of my gear to come back up and I was greeted to a really nasty smell. Like a smell of sulfur and just like rotting meat or something. And it, it made me sick to my stomach. I had to go outside and I ended up getting sick out in the yard. Um, I ended up leaving. It, it seemed like it got really personal. The house is, it's unique. It's, it can be very confusing. When you, when you think you know what's going on, it's like all of a sudden it's something new. It's something different. Um, you can come in here and everything is calm, everything is fine, and you can have a very positive experience. Other times you can come in here and it's not that it's a bad experience, but it has sort of like this aggression. We were here early, did a walkthrough. I left recorders in rooms, did some picking up on a few things. I picked up on a few things before I'd even came here because with how I work, I meditate on a place, don't know the history of it. I pick up what my spirit guides or what I pick up on and get flashes and hear things and go from, from there. And we came in and did our investigation. It was quiet, did some EVPs, a few things happening here and there. And later in the evening, we went upstairs we were in the Ouija board room doing EVP sessions and getting some pretty intelligent responses. And um, I just kept having this draw and kept hearing blue room, blue room. And Mike and us, and we went to the front room where there was a baby carriage. And we had seen, Melissa and I had seen a shadow go down the hallway, which she caught on film and we were doing EVP in the front room and I kept hearing blue room and was being drawn from upstairs, being drawn like I had to come down here. So we broke up, some stayed in the control room and it was Mike Diddy, M Melissa Howe and I that came into the blue room. We were in here doing EVP session and we kept hearing talking coming, like a conversation coming from the other room. I was, I said, smelled something. And it had gone away because Mike and Melissa didn't smell it at the time. And then so I leaned up against the wall and from my peripheral vision, I could see in the mirror, in the doorway from the bathroom, something going back and forth. And I heard Melissa say, get off me, don't touch me. Something had touched the back of her neck over here by this doorway. And not even a minute or two later, I felt like something had literally took its hand and brushed across my face, moving my hair. Then I smelled the smell again, and it smelled like not, not necessarily sulfur, but raw sewage or dead animal that you know you drive by on a highway and you could smell that lingering smell. And it literally made me nauseous and it burned my nose, my eyes. And I remember asking Mike, since it was a restroom and I hadn't smelled it earlier, if there was plumbing issues, trying to debunk, because I do debunk first. I don't go straight to the paranormal or straight to that it's evil or a demon. That's not what I do. Um, I'm very open-minded. And they started smelling it. And all of a sudden, I felt like this force, like invisible energy was coming toward me. And I backed up across the room and was facing the doorway where the bathroom doorway was. And it literally felt like there was a portal that was open. And the next thing you know, I remember saying, Melissa, 
and I felt like something had jumped me. It paralyzed me. I was screaming for my team member, Scott, um, because he always pulls me out of situations, but it wasn't coming out verbally through my mouth. I was screaming in, in my head, but I was paralyzed and could not move. And it literally felt like something had wrapped itself around me and was straddling my back and holding me. And from there, I remember being pulled outside and throwing up. You need to call. Um, you need to call. Yeah. Oh, it's closed. Melissa. I need you to get out of here. cannot hurt any of us. Okay. We gotta go. Let's go. I gotta go. Can you move? Step. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Give me a second. You got Back it. off. Back off now. In God's name, back off. You go back to your bathroom, you stay back there. Back. I got you, I got you, I got you. Don't, don't fucking touch me! Fuck! Leave me the fuck alone! Okay, sweetie, okay. Open the door, get the door. Open the door, let's get her out of here. Get the door. contribute to a haunting if that's what's going on I don't know I you know my belief is um, if somebody you know this is just me think dies it doesn't mean the house is haunted the problem is it's the kinds of death that occurred that has got my attention um, really I mean horrible we're, we're talking about abuse okay there there was abuses done and tragedies that did maybe some family members that lived here yes yeah there was and that again I, I said I didn't believe that uh, yeah there was court filing where that individual but back then they didn't really side with the women on abuse and uh, yeah that guy was real abusive was it a previous uh, tenant or a resident here I'm going to say my sister-in-law is the historian on the house as far as you know uh, but I think that person actually own the house but there's a chance they could have just rented the upstairs this was early 1900s maybe um, and I could be wrong it could be late 1800s but I did see some of the documents on it where they filed she filed you know that he was very abusive but again the courts didn't you know you can file go home and you can get beat yeah they're not so that was sad times Take a breather. That was crazy. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's almost like it, it, it wasn't. It was like somebody punched me in the chest. That type of chest pain. Mm-hmm. You don't feel that, do you? The whole house is jumping up and down. Yeah. Um. I haven't articulated anything yet. I'm okay. just letting it unfold. I just wondered. 
<clears throat> Something is very, very unhappy. Yeah, it's pissed off at him. Obviously. <laughs> well, when you felt, when you shine that light down through there, you, you turn. There was a chanting. And then silence. And then I felt something enter the doorway. And soon as I moved the Mag Check 95 over there, the field, I could hear the field very low. Right. And then, boom. Well, see, I've, I've been feeling stuff on my legs the whole time. I've been, been up here both times. But when you turn that corner and you had your red light shining, there was a silhouette of a, of a person. And I don't, it had to have been in that little kitchen area kind of standing there up against that wall. I could see the silhouette. I didn't say nothing because I could see it. And that's why I asked you that something just walked past her. And it was fast. Go ahead, Joe. Well, go ahead, Joe. I'll go first. Oh, I'll go. If you... I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You have the better camera. <laughs> it was <not> super fast. <laughs> Whatever it was. <sighs> I'm right behind you. I think I can get it. Demons this time. and shit. Man. Flashlight. I don't know what the hell that was, but that's yeah, so there's a smell over here. I walk right past it. Here. <laughs> I still smell my mom's sweet grass. I know. That smelled really good. Maybe that's what it is. It's pissed off. Yeah, it just it was like Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was moving and I got extremely hot. All I started while. feeling, I started was hearing a chanting, after, dude. After did that, it was like and I'm like, that's not sweating. good. That's and it. It sounded like, I wasn't sweating anymore. The, you know, like someone doing something not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like standing, to be honest with you, it was, it was like standing right here, but it was almost like it was kind of like this, and you could see it right down this hallway, just this, the half of it. Hold on, Derek. I smell something other than that sweet grass. Uh huh. I smell like regular smoke smoke, cigarette smoke. Is it me buzzing you? I thought I heard it, but I don't think I heard any. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. What? So, ooh, ooh. my back was tingly standing mm -hmm. there. I don't know, that's just, there's some weird shit going on right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it, that it ain't exciting, but it's just, it's weird shit because it's happening. Fast. Use the breaker box right there. I'm picking that up. Oh, you'll pick that up in a heartbeat. It's just like everything's happening really fast. Almost like it ramped up to the point of it saying, you know, okay, it's time to play. Yeah, that's why I brought my mom. <laughs> it, she, w she was doing it last time. Mm -hmm. And I want her to do it again. It's the only way, was, I Miss, know. Missy was also saying when we walked up the stairs, she said it isn't just what got you, Joe. I don't know if my cord got caught up or if something pulled my pant leg. Your cord's hitting your leg. Mm -hmm. your I mean, leg. it was a pull. So. Oh, okay. Well, let me put that up so so we can so it don't sure. hit your leg. Yeah, she said that. Uh, <coughs> The lobbing the heads down the stairs. Yeah. She said when when anybody comes up the stairs, it seemed like they they it doesn't matter they throw whatever they can find from wherever they're at. They just throw it at you like they're trying to keep you from coming up the stairs. See, a lot of what you said are things that I've actually picked up here. The woman moaning, we captured that. Um, we've captured a man's voice. We've captured footsteps at like f four or five in the morning. It sounded like something was rolling down the stairs. The problem was we didn't have anything rolling at the time, mm -hmm. but there, I mean, the three of us did hear it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I don't know what the deal is with that door, <laughs> but off, off the record, we were setting up. We knew not to shut the door because we had cables running through there because we put the DVR in the basement. But the door kind of just kept shutting. And her and I, we were just kind of teasing each other playfully. The second night, 
she tried to get close. And as soon as she did, that door slammed shut. And... Oh, that was me. Oops. Thank God. I'm telling you, Because that's a little bit too physical. Right. Thank God that I stopped. It's just a screen. Go ahead. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. I'm yeah. probably, am I blowing your camera out? There we go. Um, and then that whole second night, we got nothing but growled at. I mean, it was behind me, and then it was in between us. Then it was away from us. What's that? You hear the footsteps? Mm-hmm. That's not you moving around? No. I thought it was you. No. That's what I thought. It was, it was right there in the hallway. We got nothing but growled at. I mean, it was behind me, and then it was in between us. Then it was away from us. What's that? You hear the footsteps? Mm-hmm. That's not you moving around? No. I thought it was you. No. That's what I thought. It was, it was right there in the hallway. We got nothing but growled at. I mean, it was behind me, and then it was in between us. Then it was away from us. What's that? You hear the footsteps? Mm-hmm. That's not you moving around? No. I thought it was you. No. That's what I thought. It was, it was right here in the hallway. Uh, some said the children that went missing, they had found later on, they moved into Ohio or something, but somebody later showed me that wasn't them. That was an uncle. And I said, okay, and they showed me the time frames. You know, they should be at this age, this guy's at this age, you know, that kind of stuff. And I said, no, 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 I buy it. So that's a little alarming. And two, some of the artifacts in the crawl space that, again, I didn't find these, some workers, family members, digging around, found were really alarming. They were, um, and you guys know about this, the women clothing. Had they not been wrapped as if they were trying to be preserved um, in that way, it wouldn't have bothered me as bad. But it made me really upset because you guys heard the rumor of serial killer might have been tied to the property. He might not have stayed here, but he might have been here. And how much, I don't know. Well, let's, let's talk about that real okay. quick. It dates back during the Civil War, right? Let's kind of walk us through that mm -hmm. story. Actually, this guy is fairly recent. He would run with the uh, Civil War circuit. And I, in the beginning, said it's not true. And then later they showed me he was in town. Then they showed he was tied to the house which I can't get into details on that. That involves, uh, I'll tell you guys off camera. I'm sorry, everybody watching. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of, and I thought, well, okay, that's highly probable now. And then they find these items. That really bothered me. They look like trinkets. You would, you know, serial killers, I guess I looked into, will sometimes kill, uh, take their victim, take a trophy and this was so close to that, it wasn't funny. So that alarmed me a little bit, which made working in the crawl space even that much more harder, so. What was interesting was one of the yeah. first things my mother picked up on last year was, uh, there was talks about getting rid of people is what she said. There was five in total. Really? And at the time she said there was one person that had not been killed yet, but there was a plan to kill five people in total. I didn't know if that related to anything or not. Oh my God, that might have related to him. Oh. 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 Wow. Hmm. That. I'm trying to figure out where it is exactly. I don't think we're standing on it. Um, pentagram on the floor. And I can't tell if it's here, above, or below. Yeah. What's uh, the significance of it? Uh, witchcraft. On the floor, candles. 
Um, they're doing rituals, um, chants, um, discussions of things that shouldn't be discussed. Can you elaborate a little bit? Uh, I feel weird with people listening to me. Um, getting rid of people. Killing, murder? Right, getting, getting rid of people. Um, up to five. Four successful. One remains. Laughter. Stairs, it sounds like a piano. I don't know what that means. I don't either. I just have to say it the way it is. It may make sense later. Stairs, this sounds like a, a piano. Piano in the wind, oh, the strings vibrating in the wind is the sound. Like all the keys being played at once, like an old piano with the boards off and the winds howling through the chords. Here's a question. This has been a 12 year, well, 12 plus year flip that you're pretty much stuck in. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you do, everything you try to do, that nothing can get done because of the activity in the house. Mm -hmm. Have you con even considered just cutting your losses, tearing the property down, and excavating the land? See if any of these claims are true. Are there bodies buried on the land? You know, did, did a serial killer live here? Bury some of his bodies on the land, especially with all the artifacts that you found. Having somebody come in and excavate the property to find if there's anything here that could tie into the haunting or even the the, the strangeness of the stuff that may not be a haunting. Good question. Um, I wanted to burn the place down several times because it, uh, the, the issue is, this is a financial issue. Once you take a structure off, the value of land is not that much. Correct. That was one issue too. Uh, the other issue is I had hoped the superstition would die down and I could get rid of it. Now it's gone absolutely the other way. And I, I could not sell it to a family, not tell them, hey, you know, I don't know whether you believe in this, but here's stuff going on. And thirdly, they had come out and done ground penetrating radar on, I think just maybe that, that part and a little bit of this, but uh, they did pick up some anomalies. Uh, not good for me, because I thought he was going to redeem me, you know, because there was rumors that the things in the basement was brought in by the occult group, uh, the one that was like 30, 40 years ago. And I said, yeah, that's probable. You know, you can go in if you really dig around and get some weird stuff, like even human remains for whatever you need them for in your practice. Um, but um, after they came in and did that, that, that ruined that. So now, yeah, it did. So it's more likely the basement was dug and they they found them back in 1850s. Um, as far as um, finishing that up, I decided, well, I'm into science. I love museums. I'm gonna try to make this the best museum I can. So I got some uh, projects that are a little touchy, but I, I'm going to go ahead and do them. Now, if I get negative feedback on that, I'll back away. But one is I'd like to put a tunnel in, but I got to be careful on where I go with it. That's so, yeah, uh, to mimic the catacombs, um, we, we're starting to get a lot of artifacts. And I'm trying to do each section of the house dedicated to a subject matter. Like this is about the history a poltergeist and get every artifact from 17, 1800s to now on it. So if somebody just wants to do research, maybe I'll have this stuff here and 
one room, so. I have a final question before we kind of, we'll do a little walk through, quick walk through before you leave. Okay. How has this whole experience changed you? Your perception, your view on reality, life, spirituality, everything. Kind of give me a good breath bow around that change. Um, a good question. Um, in a nutshell, I would say, and this is just a quick, I'm not a religious man, I'll be honest with you. Like I said, I am bound by science, so we're kind of, but this has kind of made the science part a little bit more broader. Uh, little's not a good term, a lot broader, where I'm looking at things a little different. Uh, um, it kind of makes me think, it didn't really, I didn't make me think, it kind of push the idea harder that there's a lot more going on than what we think that we'll ever know. And as far as, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say that um, that's opened my mind and my eyes up to bigger ideas of what's going on. And I may not be comfortable with some of that stuff, but, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. The Midwest is full of small rural towns just like Hartford City. All of them have stories, but this town in Blackford County, Indiana, resonates with dark history like no other town we have experienced. Our two-year investigation of the haunted locations here has taught us many things, but one thing still enters my mind before I lay my head down on the pillow before I go to sleep at night. All towns have stories. Some towns have secrets. This town harbors a darkness that will stain the streets for many years to come. And for those who call Hartford City their home, remain weary. And those who come to visit seeking answers to what goes bump in the night, I issue you one warning. Be careful what you wish for.